Hanging out here at the auto show. As you know, Sarah and I are taking New York by storm this week. So I was just wondering, what does one do at an auto show if you're not in the market to buy a car, but you still want to have some fun? I'm going to go find out. As you can see, Pirelli's got a cool setup here, and they're going to let us take a little loop around the track. So I'm going to drive one of these babies. Racing this time from Toyota. Let's see if I can make it through without crashing or driving the wrong way this time. Whoa. <laughs> brush up on your history. This is the car that Roosevelt rode, rode around in, and we'll never forget what your spare is. These macaroons look amazing. Yes. What kind are they? Well, we have vanilla, okay. pistachio, and caramel. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to go pistachio. All this thanks to Audi. Ugh. Cappuccino at us. Oh my god. They have cake balls. Peanut butter cookie. Yum. Latte. More coffee for Lindsay. Soy latte, my favorite. Okay guys, full disclosure, one of the perks about being the press is you get a lot of free shit. So I'm sorry, but this won't be there for the open days to the public. Being at the auto show is stressful. It's tiring. It's a hard work, guys, okay? So if you need a little break, you can just chill out in one of these nice minivans. Maybe push down the back seat, sprawl out. <sighs> Maybe the TV would work. That's one of the perks about today, all the free stuff. This is probably the only free car I'm going to get today. As you can see, if you don't love cars, you better love food, drinks, or car simulators.
rolling too. Now the Avalon still somewhat has an understated present and it has a lot of elegance in its styling as well. Now for 2016 the Avalon has been refreshed in terms of styling and they also introduced a couple new features too. And then the Touring model now comes with a sport tuned suspension. Now our model of the Avalon is the top of the line limited. It comes with HID headlights, an 11 speaker audio sound system, as well as tri-zone automatic climate control. Now with the new styling of the Avalon, they changed the grill a little bit. It's now a little bit bigger and they also changed the turn signals as well. It certainly looks a lot more like the new Camry in my opinion. Now here goes the key fob design for the vehicle. It's your typical Toyota Smart Key. You have your remote keyless entry, your lock unlock to release. Your trunk is right here and then you have your panic button. Now this color is known as the Midnight Black Metallic. It also does have Smart Key access on the driver's door and the front passenger door. And it comes with a full-on black leather interior. You have your power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar and a power thigh extension as well. All right, now stepping on inside of the Avalon here. It's a very nice place to spend your time. Plenty of room for the front occupants. I have plenty of headroom and plenty of leg room. And this cabin just oozes quality with nice stitching everywhere on the dashboard. And everything where you touch is pretty much going to be soft touch materials. But it's a very stylish and elegant looking cabin. Pretty lavish too. Now you do have push button ignition. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. And what you're hearing there is your base engine, which is a three and a half liter V6. There's also a hybrid available, which comes with a four cylinder engine. Full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission, you have a six speed automatic. If you do get the hybrid model of the Avalon, you do get a CVT automatic. We also do have manual shiftability and paddle shifters, which is nice. When you put the vehicle into reverse, it tilts down the mirrors and it displays your rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory. And we also do have rear cross traffic alert. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights. They are automatic, of course, and the hazards as well. All windows are fully automatic in the Avalon. Let's go ahead and pop up the hood, check out the engine bay. Heated exterior mirrors with side turn signal indicators, and you also do have blind spot detection. Now, if you didn't know, the current generation Avalon is also based off of the Lexus ES. They share the same platform together. Pretty good looking 18 inch alloy wheels. Coming up front, you have HID headlights with LED daytime running lights. Powering this big old full-size sedan is Toyota's very familiar and very trustworthy three and a half liter V6. You also find this powertrain in the Toyota Camry too. Now it produces 268 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 248 pound-feet of torque at 4,700 RPM with EPA estimates being an okay 21 in the city and 31 on the highway. That is pretty above average fuel economy, especially for how big this vehicle is. But the EPA numbers are the same exact numbers that you will find in the Toyota Camry equipped with the V6 engine too. So it could be a little off there. 
However, if those are the fuel economy numbers, this certainly is pretty above average for this vehicle. But if it's fuel economy that you're looking at, then you'll want to go with this 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid paired with an electric motor, and it earns up to 40 miles per gallon. And most Avalons, however, are going to be equipped with the regular three and a half liter V6 that we have. Trims of the Avalon start at the base XLE trim, which starts at $32,650. The XLE Plus starts at $34,400. The XLE Premium starts at $35,850. The Touring starts at $37,050. And then the Top of the Line Limited starts at $40,000. $450. Competitors for the Avalon, you have the vehicles in the full-size sedan class. This includes the likes of the Chevrolet Impala, Dodge Charger, Ford Taurus, Chrysler 300, as well as the Nissan Maxima, Hyundai Azera, and the Kia Cadenza. Total vehicle price, you're looking at $42,010 for this particular one. Like I said, EPA estimates are 21 city, 31 highway. Coming up top, we also do have a shark fin antenna, rear window defroster, of course. Coming to the rear of the vehicle, you will find LED tail lights. They have been slightly refreshed. They have a more smoked out design to them. And then you have these squared off exhaust tips at the bottom right here. All of your basic powered features, power windows, power door locks, power mirrors, memory seat settings for two people, chrome interior door handles. All right, let's go ahead and hear how that V6 engine sounds. Now build quality and materials are quite impressive inside of the Avalon here and certainly have a Lexus-like level of quality. Now if you are looking at the Lexus ES, the Avalon certainly great, makes a great alternative to that vehicle and you will find nice stitching everywhere inside of here, soft touch materials on the mid door panel, upper door panel, armrest, dashboard, everywhere you pretty much touch is going to be soft to the touch. Um, build quality is excellent, no panel gaps inside of here, and the interior trim and pieces fit well together. Overall, this interior somewhat exceeds the Lexus ES in terms of its cabin ambiance. Now coming to the steering wheel design, it's okay, but it's certainly not the best from the Toyota brand. It is a little plain Jane looking, especially for a $40,000 vehicle. Um, I wish they would have put some kind of chrome trim right here or some kind of wood accent setting right here. Um, but it's just kind of plain looking in my opinion. Now coming over here we have your steering wheel mounted audio controls and then you have your controls for the Toyota Intune system. Right over here you have your Bluetooth phone controls as well as your voice recognition and then this little display button controls your little information center which I'll get to in just a minute. Right over here you have your lane departure alert system and then you have your adaptive cruise control. You could set the distance if you would like as you can see right here. Let's go ahead and test out the voice recognition. How may I help you? Change source. You have several music sources. Which source do you want to listen to? 
Number one. AM. Number two. FM. The audio source is set to FM. The voice recognition does pick up your voice quite well, I have to say. Up here is where you will find your auto dimming review mirror, garage home link, and an integrated compass, sunglass container, SOS safety connect, your sunroof with your sunroof controls, and you also do have a sliding shade, of course, map lights, and then the headliner is also nice and plush too, pretty high quality. Down here is where you will find your Qi wireless charging system. Many vehicles still don't have that nowadays. And it has a little tray, which is pretty cool. And then down here is where you'll find your button for the Qi wireless charging system. And then you have your USB port with iPod integration, your auxiliary input, and an A12 volt power outlet down there. Dual cup holders, and then you have heated and ventilated front seats for the driver and the passenger. You also do have your different driver selectable modes, eco, normal, and sport. Coming to the center console storage, not too shabby. And you do have a removable tray that does adjust. So the center console lid is also nice and soft touch too. As far as seating comfort goes in the Avalon, it's excellent. The seats are very plush. They feel just like Lexus's seats, to be honest. They're buttery soft and they're great for long road trips. Thigh support is also excellent too, especially with the thigh extension that helps out quite a lot. Visibility is pretty good out of the Avalon. Lots of glass area on the front windows. Um, seeing out of the windshield is decent, but you do have this little hump right here which does intrude on the visibility through the windshield a little bit. When you get to rearward visibility, it's okay, but it's not the best in the full-size sedan class, but it does help that you have that big rear quarter window. The climate controls in the Avalon are pretty simple and easy to use. Um, it's a pretty clean looking layout too, and the touch sensitive buttons for the temperatures are calibrated very well. You do have dual zone climate control, then you have your temperatures right here for the driver and then the passenger side is right there. Your fan speeds are located right here too. And you have your off button, different zones, your recycling, then your defrosters too. Pretty easy and simple looking. And then you have a digital clock in the center right there which is nice. Down here we have your pre-collision alert system and this is where you could set the distance. It shows you up on the information center what uh, distance it's set at. Traction control off and then you have your blind spot detection, your trunk release and then your power rear sunshade. And then you have a little coin box as well. All right, let's get to the multimedia interface and the infotainment system. It's Toyota's Intune system. We've seen it countless times before. Now this is your home screen on the Intune system. Now you could set this up how you would like. You have your radio right here or your audio source, and then you have your phone and then you have the map. But however, you have to have a map card inserted and you can configure the home screen how you would like, which is pretty cool. You don't have to have the map show up. You could just have the phone or the audio sh just show up on the home screen. Now let's get to the audio sources. Now your audio sources include not nothing out of the ordinary, all the normal stuff here. We have AM, FM, XM satellite radio, your USB port with the iPod integration, Bluetooth streaming audio, and your auxiliary input. You can also reorder it how you would like. And then you also do have your CD player with your optical disk drive. HD radio is also on this bad boy too, and iTunes tagging as well. Coming to apps, you have your navigation. However, I can't show you that today because the map card is not inserted, but it's just like all of the other Toyotas and Lexuses that you will find. Um, nothing too out of the ordinary with the navigation system. Coming to the Eco, it shows you a little bar graph of how fuel efficient you're driving. And it shows you your average speed, your elapsed time, as well as your fuel range. You can clear it if you would like to. Coming back to apps, you have your setup. There's many different settings you could change from general home screen, voice, display, navigation, audio, many different settings. 
open. You have your phone, you can hook up your Bluetooth phone, have all of your contacts stored on here, and then an integrated dial pad as well. And then you have your live traffic, but you have to have the map card. Then your weather shows you your current weather. You could change the city if you would like. Messages, but you have to have a phone paired. It's for your text messages. Then you have your maintenance. So pretty much everything um, is going to require the map card for the apps. But overall, love Toyota's engine system. It's one of the best in the business. The responsiveness is lightning quick and it's very intuitive to use. The gauges in the instrument cluster have a very traditional looking setup. On the left, we have your tachometer with your coolant temperature. On the right, you have your speedometer, and then you have your fuel gauge down there too. Now coming in the center, this is for your vehicle information. It's a little LCD screen. It's controlled by this little display button right here. It's the only button that pretty much controls it. Now it shows you your distance till empty or your fuel range, and then you have a, your digital speedometer, and then it shows you your trip odometer down below, and then you have, it shows you what gear you're in as well. Over here you have your current fuel economy, and then your average fuel economy data, you can reset it, and then your time until rest, tire pressure monitoring system, and then it shows you if your lane departure alert is on or off. Then you have your adaptive cruise control, then your eco drive level if you want that on or off. And then settings that you could change. You have to hold the display button to select it. Overall, it's a pretty useful little LCD screen. It's not the most intuitive information center I've tested out, however. Now we do have an 11 speaker JBL audio sound system in this car and it's one of the best sound systems I've ever heard in a Toyota. The sound system has great bass and the audio quality is very crisp and clear. I would certainly upgrade to the JBL audio sound system. Now as far as the way the Avalon drives, now this is certainly not the sports car of the full-size sedan class. That title belongs to the Nissan Maxima. However, it certainly does offer much more driver engagement than it did in years past. It certainly does not feel like the Japanese Buick sedan. And you can feel for where this vehicle is trying to go. The steering isn't numb and it's not vague. And it certainly does not feel like a rolling couch. With that being said, the ride quality is still pretty good and should be pretty good for most consumers however for the traditional Avalon buyer um, the ride quality may be too firm however I think the Avalon certainly has a pretty good balance between good ride comfort and pretty good handling too all right and I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the vehicle let's go ahead and check out the rest of the car Build quality and materials do follow through in the rear of the Avalon. You still have nice stitching everywhere and soft touch panels too. Now, sitting back here in the Avalon, it's a very comfortable experience. The seats are very comfortable, still nice and plush, just like the front seats. And I would certainly take a long road trip on this vehicle, especially in the back of the Avalon here. The rear headrests are also adjustable except for this one, the middle seat. Now, three adults should certainly feel very comfortable back here. There's plenty of space and room. And you also do have your rear center armrest with cup holders. And then you have a ski trunk pass-through right there. And then you have your dual map pockets, rear air vents, and then you have automatic climate control back here, which is nice. And then you have heated seats for the left side as well as the right side. And then down there is where you will find a 12 volt power outlet. And you have your map lights, of course. All right. Now the Avalon does have a pretty large trunk, I have to say. However, if you do get the Avalon Hybrid, the trunk space is cut back a little bit because of the battery pack. You also have your power passenger seat with power recline and power lumbar. Low box compartment, nice and damp. 
So the 2016 Toyota Avalon is a top choice for a full-size sedan with its comfort.